you want to learn how to grow your own microbeans like we do for our retail clients and our restaurants, stop right here. This is the channel for you and we will show you step by step how you can grow your own microgreens indoors at home, in your kitchen or in a basement, wherever you want. Stay tuned, hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. We will be posting new videos every second Thursday. So stay tuned and let's get going right now. So I'm going to start by cutting my bio straight. That's the thing you need is bio straight felt. That's what I'm using. I have it on a roll like this one. So this is our bio straight. And I have to cut it. For me, it's better because it's, uh, it's more economic to use this one than the pre-cut uh, pieces of uh, bio straight. So what I have to cut this, for me, I just use a fabric cutter. I have a big measure and then I have a fabric cutter uh, pad that I use as well so before I'm going to cut my bio straight I'm going to show you what we are doing so we have a uh, bootstrap farmer trays this is a mess tray where the uh, bio straight will go on after it's cut so we divide our trays in four pieces so we have to make sure that the size is correct and that it fits in here so of course if you look at this the width of this bio straight is perfect for this because it's made for ceiling trays. So all I have to do is cut the right length and uh, divide this piece in two and make two times two pieces out of it and put it in here. So let me show you uh, how I cut it. So my bio straight is already set to just a little bit less than nine inches and I'm going to cut it. So here we have one piece. And all I have to do now is I'm folding it in half and cutting it in two. Besides the bio straight, you also need these trays, like you already saw in the previous part where I showed you how to cut um, how to cut the bio straight. Is you need trays. So these are seedling trays, and we get our trays at Bootstrap Farmer. I love the quality of the trays. They're food safe. They're really sturdy, and they keep the same shape throughout. They have different sizes available as well. So we use the 10 by 20 because the uh, because we use them for our restaurants and for our uh, retail clients. And uh, yeah, so this is the perfect size for us. So what you need is a bottom tray, which is a closed tray, no holes in it. We call this also a corrugated tray. There's different names for it. And then the top part of it, where the bias tray goes on here, as I showed you earlier, is called the mesh tray. They are both 10 by 20. And this one goes on top of that closed tray. And then you put the bias straight on top, as I showed you earlier. Let me just demonstrate one more time. And then this comes on here like this. So the next thing you're going to need is spray bottles. So this is a spray bottle. It's one liter. And you can pump it up with pressure which is, works really well um, to spray over your microgreen seeds when they're in the germination uh, trays, in the seedling trays. So this is just pure water. So that's one we have. And then we have a second one here. This is one and a half liter. I really like this one. And this one we use specifically for our antifungal spray. So. This one you would prepare beforehand if you were, would, uh, would want to use it. 
So what we go put in here, it's a one and a half liters of water. So before we put the water in, we're going to measure out some uh, different things that we're going to put in there. So what you need is a one and a half liter uh, spray bottle, some measuring spoons, simple measuring spoons or one fourth mostly because I use the one fourth for this one for the potassium bicarbonate. So this is the first thing I'm going to be putting in when I use it. So I use of this, I use three one fourths of a spoon, this size, three times in this big bottle. So I'm going to put that in first. It doesn't really matter the order though, but that's what I started. I put three one fourth of teaspoons of this in the one and a half liter uh, bottle. Then I have um, oregano oil, organic oregano oil. And I'm going to put in 20 drops of this also in here. Then I have some organic neem oil. The same here. I'm going to also put 20 drops of that in this bottle. What I use for that is a little pipette. I don't know how you call it. <laughs> it's a little dropper. Sorry, it's just a little dropper. Sorry, my English sometimes is a little bit off. <laughs> so you use this little dropper. You take uh, the oil out of here and put 20 drops in there. You don't want to put in more, just be careful with it. Also, this neem oil, when it's cold uh, in the house or wherever you keep it, it can get solid. So you can see that in the bottle here, when it gets solid, you can see it turns kind of white. And what I do is I have a little cup, a little cup, I fill up with hot water and I put this one in there and I let it sit for a bit. And then it will loosen up and then you make sure you shake it before you use it so you make sure that everything is well mixed and then you open it up and you put uh, 20 drops in there as well so that's what i put in here then i uh, fill it up with water to one and a half to one and a half liters and close it up make sure to shake it really really well each time you use it shake it really well Pump up your bottle before you use it. So that's how that works. So the next thing you're going to need is a, a bucket of water or a spot in the sink, whatever works for you. Just for the video purposes, I have this container. It's just a Tupperware container that I have. And I added some water in here, just regular tap water. And I already put some pieces of bio straight in there. You want to let it make sure that it kind of soaks up some water. It soaks it up really fast, so you don't have to do it overnight. You can do it just whatever, 10 minutes before you start uh, sowing your seeds. So these ones are going to go in here right now. So I'm just going to show you. I just push them down. And it's already actually good. I mean, they get soaked really fast. Really simple. So that's the next step. So now I'm going to show you the next part, how we put the bio straight on and how I make it from the small pieces to the longer pieces and how perfectly it will fit after. So as you can see here, I have the bio straight still in the water. What I'm going to do before I'm going to put it in here, I kind of fold the double and squeeze some of the water that's in there out. Just a little bit. You don't want it to be soaking wet, right? And I open it up like this. Pull it out and I lay it down and I pull it out a little bit more to make sure that it fits. It's very easy to do. And then I'm going to put it out on the first part. 
So I'm going to make sure I start from the middle, from the middle of the tray, and I'm going to push it out a little bit. Part. It's actually really easy because I just hold my hand down and I kind of push it down so it fill, fills up all those little holes on the bottom of this mesh tray, like this. You see, so now it fits, right? So let me do the other part so you can see it even better because you want to make sure that, there's, that they're really close together because otherwise the seeds are going to go in between and it's not going to help you. And as you can see now, it fits in the tray perfectly. There's no issue. So the size I cut looked really small, but once it's wet, you can stretch it out a little bit, right? And it's going to stay this, this size. So that's the way I do the bio straight. So you go ahead and do yours, and I'll see you in the next part where we're going to get ready to start putting the seeds on. Okay, so let's get started by weighing off the radish microbean seeds. We use 27 grams on a 10 by 20 tray. So we're using mom's product seeds. All our seeds we're using are mom's product seeds. What we also do is with the seeds, we keep them in the freezer. Let's see if I can open it, it's sometimes hard. So let me measure this off, I zeroed this out. So I'm going to put 27 grams of radish seed in here. Yeah, so to keep them in the freezer is a good plan, especially if you have the space for it, because it keeps your seeds good for a long time. We make them on a regular basis. We, we make my greens every week, of course, so it's different for us, but nevertheless, I still put them in there because also the temperature is the same all the time in there. Well, in other areas of your house or whatever spot you put it in, it could fluctuate, but you want to have more consistent temperature to keep your microgreens at, to keep your microgreen seeds at. Okay, 27. Okay, so that's for the seeds. Now let's go continue and I'll go put them on the bio straight. Okay, so we're going to start a little bit away from the edge. Otherwise, they're going to be rolling beside the bio straight. I mean, it's going to happen eventually. I mean, there's always going to be a few ending up there. Now it's all spread out. Now we're going to grab our um, antifungal spray. Shake it, pop up your bottle, and spray it over your radish microgreen seeds. Make sure they're wet. There we go. And we're going to grab a piece of foam. Spray antifungal on that one as well. Put it upside down on top of your radish seeds. And that's it. So here we are at day one of the radish after seeding it yesterday. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take out my label, put it on the side. And I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to slowly look underneath to see if there's already any roots. No, nope, there's no roots yet. It's too early. Right? It doesn't make sense that there will already will be roots the next day. Probably tomorrow we will have roots. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to empty out this water in our bucket or in the sink whatever is whatever works for you and then I'm going to add some clean water in there again I use water from our system which is already pH correct just like that you don't want to put in too much you just want it to be kind of even with the highest part of the tray and you grab your radish microwaves again grab the tray and put it back on top don't forget to put the label back in Okay, so that's it for today. I'll see you back tomorrow for day two. So here we are at day two of our red radish. I'm going to take off the label and put that on the side. I'm going to show you the bottom. Are there any roots? I don't know. 
Oh, there's a few peeking through here. Let me just turn it around and show you. There's already a few coming out on this side. Look. So there's a few there. So it's starting. So that's pretty good on day two. So I'm going to put this on the side for now before I'm going to look underneath. I'm first going to refresh the water here. Same as yesterday. Just refresh the water. There we go. And then we put that radish back on top. Now we're going to peek underneath. And I'm slowly going to take this off. Oh, that looks good. As you can see, there's a few germinated seeds hanging on the phone. Again, no worries. It will come off by itself. And this is what it looks like underneath. And you can see the root hair is developing. Again, this is not mold. Looks pretty good, right? So all we're going to be doing is spraying a little bit of water over top. The root hair disappears. So clearly no mold. We're going to do the same on our foam. And then we're going to be putting this back on top. Put the label back on. And I'll see you back tomorrow for day three. If this tutorial is helpful for you, comment with the word awesome below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button. So now, let's continue with our tutorial. Okay, so here we're back at day three for radish microgreens. First thing I'm going to be doing is checking for the roots. And as you can see, there's plenty of roots here. They look nice and white. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put this on the side for a second because I'm first going to refresh the water in here, so I won't forget. I'll throw out my old water and put in some fresh water. Make sure you put in enough water, but not too much, because you don't want them to sit there and swim. So this is actually good. A little bit more. I'm grabbing my radish back, putting it back on. I'm going to look underneath the foam to see what it looks like. Oh, they're doing pretty good. So again, they still have to push more, so I'm going to be spraying some water on these. Looks great. So I'm going to also spray the foam. And I'm going to put it back on top. And I'm going to pack, put it back into the germination area for tomorrow and I'll see what it looks like tomorrow. So I'll see you back tomorrow. So here's our red radish that I just had put in the system. And again, it looks like there's a lot of space here and there is a lot of space. But the red radish will grow pretty quick and it will fill up all those holes. And I know this is going to turn out really well because I've done it before and um, that's the way we use just the amount of seeds we use on it, the uh, 27 grams. It's more than enough. You'll see as we continue. And then the root structure, as you can see, looks really good. As soon as the root structure looks like this, when it's in your bottom water like that and you see it looks like this, and you don't need to worry because then they're well established and will be doing they will be doing doing well so I'll see you back tomorrow so we're back for day five of our red radish and as you can see it's starting to fill out more and more it still has a couple more days to go but it still looks fresh and clean let's look at the bottom let's see what the roots look like and as you can see the roots look amazing still beautiful pearly white so if you're at this stage if you're working with me then i would like for you to do what i would like for you to do is take out the bottom tray refresh the water again like we did yesterday and put the radish back on and back under the light and then i'll see you back tomorrow for day six so 
here we are day six of our red radish and as you can see the difference with from yesterday it really started filling in as they grow and they take the space they have available to fill in everything that's why you don't want to ever see them too densely because then they won't have a chance to really grow so i think it looks really good i would probably wait one more day Overall, I think it looks really good. It's not completely even, but it sometimes happens. Sometimes it's completely straight, the whole canopy on top, and sometimes it's a little bit more up and down. It's, it doesn't really matter, though. It's just made, maybe just the way it looks, but it doesn't make any difference for the microgreens. And as you can see here, look how pretty it all looks. And all the, you can see all the seed holes here. They've fallen off. And because we use the, the cover on the top, it, it makes the seed holes fall off it pushes them off as they grow up and look at this root structure doesn't that look gorgeous nice and white and healthy so i'll show you one more time tomorrow what it looks like and then i'm probably going to be ready to harvest this uh, beauty so here we're back for day seven of our red radish microgreens and they look amazing i gotta tell you i think they are beautiful I think all my microgreens are beautiful. I think they're amazing. They're really, really good for you. Look at these beautiful colors. Look at this beautiful growth. Let me get you a closer look on what it looks like. Look how pretty. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice and firm radishes. So let me show you what the root structure looks like after seven days. Wow, eh? Look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? So there we go. That's what it looks like. The next part I'm going to uh, show you what it looks like when I cut them because I'm ready to harvest them. I'm also going to show you uh, a part on the screen where it's going to tell you all the nutritional value of these beautiful microgreens. If you enjoyed watching this video, please, uh, I would like you to subscribe to this channel and maybe hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss any more of these videos. And uh, so let's go to the next part. I'll show you what it looks like when it's cut. So here I'm going to show you how I cut the microgreens. So I'm only going to cut half the tray. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take the bottom of the, of the bio straight, pull up the edge a little bit, and gently pull up the whole piece, because as you know, there's four pieces in our tray. So I'm going to make a little bit of space in between here. I'm going to gently pull it up and I'll hold it with my hand underneath. And once I'm there, I'm going to go like this. And I have it here and I'm going to put it on a separate tray. That's one. And there's some loose pieces here. I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to do the same with the second piece that I'm going to be cutting. There we go. That's piece number two. So now I only have these two left here, so I make sure because I put them back in my system because I want them to get water. And uh, so I'm going to make sure that it stays up straight. It's really nice and clean, as you can see. So this is going back into the system until I'm ready to cut this. In the meantime, I just want to leave it exactly where it is. So I'm going to put this back in and then I'm going to show you how I cut these microgreens. So to cut these microgreens, these red radish, I just use some really sharp scissors that I have. You can use a knife, you can use anything you want as long as it's sharp. So I just separated these two because these are the only ones I'm going to be cutting. So what you do is actually really simple. What you do is you just grab your body straight on the bottom. And then what I do is just grab a, a couple of them, hold the body straight down, pull it down gently, and I can pull it right off. As you can see, I can pull this right off, and then all I do, I just cut off the wood, and that's it. So here I have a tray with just some uh, special towel, paper towel on it that I'm using to make sure that if the microgreen is wet, that the humidity goes in there because you want to keep them dry, especially when you have to wrap them up. Again, here you go. And you just cut it off. And that's how simple it is. So that's how I'm going to do the rest of this tray. 
really simple. Grab a piece, pull it off. It comes out really easy. And you just cut off the roots. That's it. Let me finish this up here. So this is half the tray that I just cut up and it looks beautiful. I love the colors of these beautiful radish. I kind of mix them up. I'm going to put them in my mix because I make a mix, which is called the rainbow mix. Look at these beauties. Doesn't that look amazing? And they taste really, really good. They're nice and crunchy, hot and spicy. Look at these beautiful radish. Let me know in the comments what you've learned from this video. For more videos like this, check out the videos right here. If you like this video, put the thumbs up. If you did like the video, put the thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Have an amazing day.